Hi, welcome to my warehouse. My name is Blake. We are here to talk about five tips for Dollar Tree items on eBay, any dollar store really. The reason you're here is because you uh, you are motivated to make your life better, and I want to help. I think motivated people are, it, it's inspiring, it gives me energy, and so I want to give that back to you. This is not some scam. I'm not trying to get you to buy my course. I just like helping people learn how to make money. Again, not going to hold your hand, but over the next few minutes, the information you're going to get is going to be, I hope, extremely helpful for those looking to start, uh, the beginners, the people who are a little bit scared to walk into this retail arbitrage water. But first, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you already are subscribed, hit the bell notification for uh, notifications when my videos go live. Again, that is also very helpful. It's free for you, totally free, and it helps my channel out a lot, which in turn helps more people make more money. So if you want the world to be filled with independent, self-motivated people, I encourage you to do the actions uh, previously described. Tip number one is utilizing the eBay app. eBay gives you everything you need to find out what things sold for, uh, what things are going for currently. There are active listings and sold listings on eBay. You want to check sold listings first and then active listings second. Well, with the, 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 uh, the thinking, the, the knowledge, the strategy behind that being, if they sold, then that has validated the demand. And then uh, the current listings are going to be with the actual prices. So if something sold for 10 bucks yesterday, but there's 19 listed today for $3, that $10 price, although uh, it proves demand, the supply has thus changed or since changed, I guess, is the right way of saying it. If you want to see how much something is worth, meaning how much it's worth to you after uh, fees from eBay, which are about 15%, after the cost of shipping, which if the item's under a pound will be about 3 to $7. After uh, the cost of items for you to ship them out. You know, the cost of goods, but also boxes like I have back here. You can get boxes for free behind most big box stores, but um, the cost of goods is going to be an important factor as well. So you say, okay, it sold for $5 minus 75 cents minus three dollars shipping minus one dollar and then that is potentially either your loss or your profit take these things into account every single time you are sourcing items don't just look at the sale price look at the sale price after cost of goods after fees after shipping now if you are listening to that last part you're saying the profit there is like 25 cents that's where tip number two comes into uh into play i guess it is bundling you want to bundle whenever you can what is bundling it's adding things together toothpaste uh, people use lots of toothpaste why not sell 10 at a time toothbrushes dish soap certain discontinued snacks or maybe just rare snacks who knows when you bundle things not only are you raising your average sale price so you're getting more money for less work you know when you look at it that way you are also raising or lowering the cost of shipping per item so if one bottle of soap sells for five dollars and it costs five bucks to ship it you're paying you know well five bucks a bottle uh and you're making no money if you can ship 10 bottles for eight dollars which would be like a uh, a padded rate mailer for example or in this case specifically a padded rate mailer ships for like 755 or something like that uh, then you're paying about 80 cents a bottle on 10 bottles. Same product, same cost of goods per product, but your shipping per product is has gone down dramatically. I mean, what is that? That's uh, like six times less. Tip number three is one I don't hear a lot of people talking about, and it's using your time more wisely, using your time wiser. Uh, when you're out shopping for groceries, running errands, use that time to be sourcing as well. Double dip on your time. Maybe get some cereal for you, get some cereal for eBay. Get some hand lotion for you, get some hand lotion for eBay. Uh, when you're doing retail arbitrage, you can easily use your time to not only get things done for you, like I said, but also source, make some money. A fun thing I do, a personal goal I have, is to buy as much profit as I spent on groceries. I don't always do that, they're not always there, but when I do, it's an especially fun time and I feel like I've actually accomplished something besides, you know, uh, garnering sustenance for the week. Tip number four is a personal one. 
And so I'm talking to you if you're the kind of person who feels like they are incapable of starting because there are so many options around you. I hear this called paralysis by analysis all the time in our Facebook group. The link is below. It's free. Join there. And I just got to say, you have to get over it. I mean, if you if you find yourself uh, being buried under all of the possibilities, all of the opportunities, and you can't commit to a course of action, you're never going to accomplish anything. It's a weird kind of self-loathing behavior that needs to go immediately. You're capable of making good decisions. You're not going to be perfect your first time, but perfection is not the enemy of greatness. Greatness is not the enemy of being good. We all got to start somewhere. Work your way up. You're smart enough to do this. You work hard enough to do this. Just get started, and if you have any questions, we'll be there to help you. Time for tip number five, which coincidentally is the second to last thing I want to tell you in this video, so stick around. We're almost done, and that is look for replenishables. Replenishable in two senses. One, it is easy for you to replenish your inventory. They are available online in bulk, at stores in bulk, whatever there is. You want it to be easy to get and to get more of. And second, it's replenishable in the consumer sense. It is used and discarded, uh, either as waste or like if you're using deodorant, sometimes in the shower it washes off and goes down into whoever knows where that stuff goes. But it's gone. It's off your body now. That's the point I'm trying to make. You want to uh, accommodate that sort of consumer behavior with your products. There's an old saying in the grocery business that every dollar that comes through the door will come through 12 more times. And what they mean by that is they know that these products that are being sold are so uh, necessary, are so important for people's lives that they're going to come back and buy them a dozen more times. Now, maybe that isn't how your business works uh, from your home or your warehouse like me, but we can use those strategies to figure out, okay, maybe this $1 profit item, if it's deodorant, maybe it isn't the best thing to do one off. But if I can validate that there is demand for this and I can find a wholesaler, well, suddenly you've gone from retail arbitrage to a wholesale business. That's what this video is about. I want you to go to the next step. It's tough to do, but again, if you work at it, I know you can do it. These videos I've been making have been watched by over 3 million people. And all I can say is thank you so much. I make these with the intention to help folks make money, but to see that it's appreciated and to see uh, people taking it and using it in their own lives to make their lives better is, is so rewarding. So again, thank you so much. Keep working hard, guys, and uh, I'll see you later. Thank you.